it's a bit slippy this one quite a bit different from the plus four safely back from test drive number one hey guys and welcome to petrol ped and welcome back to the morgan motor company here in the malvern hills in a very sunny united kingdom in this second part i'm going to take out the big brother of the plus four we've experienced the plus four nimble darty handling beautiful manual gearbox in the big brother the plus six we have more power we have a flappy paddle gearbox and we've got the hard top fitted. <laughs> that should be interesting getting in and out. Welcome to the Morgan Plus 6. Now, although these cars look very similar from the outside, in fact, underneath the underpinnings are the same. They're both based on the same bonded aluminium chassis. The big difference here is we've got an uplift in power. Underneath the bonnet now we have the epic BMW B58 engine, the inline six cylinder and a big increase in power. We're now looking at 340 horsepower compared with the plus four's 255. There's no manual option in the plus six, so we've got a flappy paddle gearbox. And again, no driver aids whatsoever, apart from ABS on the brakes. So I have a feeling this car is gonna be a little bit more of a handful than its younger sibling. It's a beautiful thing to look at. The other thing, the spec on this car, this car has alloys rather than the traditional wire wheels now i don't know about you guys i always like the look of wire wheels when they're clean but the thought of cleaning those on a regular basis i uh, wouldn't be up for that at all so if i were to spec a morgan for myself i'd definitely go for a more you know sort of modern looking alloy but look at it what a thing front of the car i just love these cba covers on the spot lamps and it's just a a more brute like car i think because this has got a bigger wheel on it it just fills the arches a little bit more but yeah absolutely brilliant now wander around the back this car does have the optional tin top i think if you are planning to use the car a lot in the winter having one of these uh, in your garage to put on during the winter months would probably be quite a good call i remember i had my s2000 i had one and it was almost like having two cars in one because when the when the hard top was on it was like driving a coupe almost um, you obviously need somewhere to store that in the summertime but my guess is if you've got one of these you've probably got a garage anyway uh, again uh, same things as with the plus four you can uh, opt for a spare wheel on the back you could have a luggage rack on the back it's purely up to you in terms of choice i'm guessing there's a weight saving gain i do quite like the look of one of these with the wheel on the back it's just it's just cool really really cool um so uh now is the time for me to try and get in the car in an elegant and uh you know well try and not look like an idiot basically now of course the big disadvantage of having long legs and being tall is when the aperture is reduced and you don't have an unlimited sunroof getting in and out the feeling is going to be a bit tricky i'm going to go leg in first oh, that's not too bad and then i've got to get this leg in as well hey this isn't that wasn't too bad much easier than i thought i had had horror moments of trying to get into a catering with the roof up now then uh, in here there's a lot of uh, similarity to the plus four the dash layout is the same big difference straight away is i have a bmw uh, gear changer and i've got some flappy paddles on the back of the um uh, behind the steering wheel but everything else in here is the same the spec of this car is beautiful the smell is this is the almost brand new demonstrator there's hardly any miles on this car at all and you can you can smell it it's got this lovely smell of leather and oh it just wraps you in a kind of glove of luxury this car's also got a dash in the body color which i really like that looks really nice it contrasts beautifully with the leather uh, we do have a sport mode button uh, just like we had uh, in the plus four as we said in the plus four that's just basically a throttle map change obviously going to be putting that into play 
but yeah, very lovely. Tiny, tiny little mirrors, but again, the swooping bonnet. You've got a slight difference in this car. You've got two little kind of nostrils of extra air intakes, which look really, really cool. Yep. Well, comes that time. I think we need to take this for a drive, don't you? Now then, if you watched the previous episode with the plus four, you'll recognize this road, but believe me, I'm not so sure you'll recognize this car. Now I said in the intro to this video that they look very similar from the outside and they do. The big difference though, this car's got a much wider track and you can kind of see it in the, in the width of the wings and the wheel arches. It's got 19 inch wheels, it's got bigger tires, and it needs that because it's got quite a bit more poke. Up front is the straight six B58 from BMW, and I've got a flappy paddle gearbox. Now at the moment, I'm just in auto. I'm not in, uh, in sort of sport mode or manual shift. I just want to get a feel for this car because it is quite a different proposition from the plus four. It's got an awful lot more go. And actually, I think on a day like today, where you've got really, really grubby roads, very, very slippy conditions. This is definitely a car that you need to give an awful lot of respect to and just be mindful of the fact that it can bite your bum. But that's cool, right? <laughs> because I said at the end of the Plus Four video, much as I love that car with the manual box, I think over time, I very rapidly want more power. Uh, well, I've got it in this. So let's see how we get on, shall we? So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna push the gear lever over to the left-hand side. I've now uh, engaged sport mode. Now there's also a valve opened in the exhaust to give me a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more noise. It's super, super horrible and slippy down here. The Morgan Valators are gonna love me when these cars come home. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be cautious until we get to the nice bit of open B road that's up here. I'm gonna be very, very ginger and very cautious. This car does feel much wider uh, and it's not, I think it's about 16 or 18 millimeters wider but it just feels wider on the road than the plus four. So down these little back British country roads, uh, at the moment I'd probably be wishing I was in the other car. But I have a feeling as soon as I get out onto some open road, I'm gonna be quite happy being sat in here. Now, interestingly, the, the paddles for the gear change are mounted to the steering column, not to the steering wheel, and they're not actually that long. And already on lock, a couple of times, you kind of have to work out where your hands are in relation to the, the flappy paddle. I'd either want extenders on there, or ideally it'd be quite nice to have them actually mounted on the steering wheel itself. <laughs> so. Let's take a, a drive up this. Now, the, the big challenge with these cars got such a long nose on them, coming out of a junction like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, quite a lot of wheel spin there. Yes. These are a lot more money, but I tell you now, <laughs> this is the car for me and I didn't think it would be. Oh, it's naughty. Now it's not as raw and as untamed as something like a Caterham 620R or 620S, which is again that kind of 300 horsepower in a car that weighs about as much as one of my trainers. The suspension's actually very compliant. It's got a lovely ride quality to it. You would think it might be a little bit harsh and a bit crashy, but it's not. Now we've got the hard top on. There is quite a lot of wind noise. And I kind of didn't notice that in the plus four because, well, clearly I had the roof off, so there was a lot of wind noise. 
but the windows here and the air going over the top of the roof it is quite a noisy cabin but I'll forgive that because it's awesome on lift off you've just got a little little bit of a burble a little bit of a crackle it sounds a little bit more natural than the pops and bangs that I got in the plus four it's just a it does sound good it really does sound good I can imagine without this roof now even with the roof on I've got a huge amount of headroom it's, it's got so much space in here for touring now luggage wise again you've got you have got some room for storage behind uh, the seats it's probably enough for a couple of squashy bags for a long weekend if you wanted to do some touring again I think I said this in the plus four video you'd probably want a luggage rack on the back this is lovely. I've just noticed this car has only got 870 miles on it. It really is very, very new indeed. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's some traction issues going on at the back. Let me try these lovely windscreen wipers. Look, look at them. They're brilliant. You've got three little windscreen wipers. Oh, these ones work better than the ones in the plus four. And because I've got the roof on, the thing I found hysterical in the plus four is the windscreen and the rear view mirror got dirty from the spray being lapped round because of the airflow. I'm not having that issue in here because I've got the roof on. Just in terms of the display, interior dash, same as the plus four. I didn't talk about that so much in that film. The central screen, you've got a little LCD screen in front that's showing me a digital readout of my speed and my current gear, as well as just telling me what my headlights are doing. I've also got a, a fuel and temperature gauge. The main rev counter is just to the left. For me, I'd quite like that in front, or at least in this model, because I'm going to be imagining a little bit more sporty driving. I maybe want some shift up lights or something and then an analogue speedo and odometer and stuff on the left hand side which to be honest I've not even looked at yet. During the factory tour I was shown this beautiful jig used to form the ash ply that is used on the rear arches of the car. This tool has been used to make Morgans for decades. When the engineering team were finalising the design for the CX platform that is the basis of the plus four and the plus six it was laser scanned and found that it does not actually make a perfect radius. Decision time. Replace the jig or update the CAD drawings with the non-perfect radius and keep the heritage. Safe to say they're still using the jig. I simply love that about this company. Okay. these roads you can probably see with a camera the amount of winter detritus on them is is quite worrying actually <laughs> and I really don't want to have any issues so I'm just just holding back just driving at kind of eight tenths and actually that's enough to get a feel for the car for me this car feels an awful lot more like a car I would want to maybe take on a track day I could see a, a you know a lovely drive to I don't know the North Scheif or down to Le Mans. I can imagine that would be quite something in this car. It has a lovely, lovely feel of it on the road. The the spring rates and the, the whole setup of the car is lovely. It deals with the lumps and the bumps, quite a compliant ride without feeling boaty or floaty. It's it's beautiful actually. Let's just have a see what this traction is like. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty slippy today, people. Oh, this car is another smile generator. Brakes feel really good. I don't have the confidence in them to really try hard today because it's just so slippy. Oh, oh, oh. 
it's when you when you ex when you accelerate away and you take the next gear you just feel the the power kick in and you just have to be wary although it does feel relatively safe when you start to feel the traction brake it doesn't it doesn't feel like one of those cars where the traction goes and and the first thing you know about it is when you're pointing the wrong way at the bottom of a ditch it does feel let's give it a go let's just try a bit of an acceleration away wet road i know but i'll be brave i'm certainly not going to try a naught to 60 but Not, <laughs> it's not, not, not too bad. <laughs> oh, but it's, I think for me, of the two cars, this is the one. This is much more up my street in terms of performance. 340 horsepower, very lightweight. I really wish it had a manual gearbox. I think for me that this car. Because it, it feels like I'm in a classic car, there's almost something not quite clicking with me about having a flappy paddle gearbox. It doesn't quite work for me, but I understand why that's the case, because this is the natural gearbox to make with this engine. It's not that it doesn't perform well, it changes beautifully up and down, and it, and it gives you a, you know, a really great uh, performance drive. I would just like that extra pedal I would like that extra connection you get with a manual box. That said, the flip side of that is, you know, if you just want to, you know, have a more relaxing drive, stick it in auto and, and this car is probably a much easier car to live with on a day to day basis. It would be much better in, I don't know, creeping traffic, town driving and those types of things. But that's not that's not why I would buy one of these cars. I'd, I'd buy these cars to to have an amazing drive down a B road or down a really fast flowing A road or on a motor circuit. And I just think for me, I'd have more driver engagement with a manual box. <laughs> now I'm back on a more narrow road. I have to behave myself a little bit more. The difference in the view is quite interesting for me. Those little nostrils you've got, those two extra vents, just totally transform the view over the bonnet of this car. The slightly wider wheel arches, it just, it just feels far, far more purposeful. Yeah, I like this car a lot. I love the spec as well. I really like the dash. I like the fact it's, it's modern, but with a, a nod to the classic lineage of this car the switch gear has a quality feel to it you might argue that the bmw gear shifter is a bit incongruous with the rest of its surroundings but you know when you when you think about the low volume of cars morgan make it doesn't make sense for them well it's why they buy their engines in it doesn't make sense for them to build their own engine why not just go to the best engine builder you can and if you're going to have a BMW um, engine and gearbox, and you're going to have the BMW shifter in it, and I don't think it looks bad. It's just, you know, just very obviously BMW. What a view. What a place to drive cars. Now, I reckon we head back to the Morgan factory, park the cars up next to each other, and I give you my final thoughts after quite an epic day of driving. But this thing, this is my cup of tea. Really is my cup of tea. It's another one of these cars. I'm not really wanting to give the keys back if I'm honest. Well, that was awesome fun. Very, very lucky to be able to test drive these two cars back to back on the same day. But what are my final impressions? Well, I'll be honest with you, before I came today, I was pretty set in the fact that I'd like the Plus 4 more. It's a manual car, I love my manual cars. And I just thought that extra level of driving engagement would, would be all the boxes ticked for me. 
And don't get me wrong, that car put a huge smile on my face. It's a slightly narrower body, so down those narrow roads you could place the car more easily. And for a lovely, relaxed Sunday blast, perfect, perfect car. My challenge with it for me and my requirements from a car is I just think that 255 horsepower, once I got used to the car, I'd be wanting a little bit more. I'd wanted to have that extra spirited driving. I guess that brings us to the plus six. Now, they look very similar from the outside, although the plus six is a bit wider track, they are very, very different cars to drive. And I'm not just talking about the fact one's manual and one's automatic, although you can get the plus four in an automatic as well. It's just that extra power, 340 horsepower, that B58 engine is just a masterpiece anyway. And, and it just gives, gives you that extra level of performance I'd want from a car. You, you have to be very, very careful, especially on a day like today. Very wet, very muddy, very greasy. If you're not on your A game, that car is going to bite you uh, and the consequences are not going to be fun. So I think for me, if I was placing an order, it would be a plus six. As I said in the car, it'd be great if it was in a manual, but even so, that auto box and the engine and the performance and the theatre for that car, amazing. I want to say a massive thank you to James and all the team here at Morgan Motors for hosting me today. Just walking around the factory, watching the craftsmanship in there is quite something. And actually, you can do that too. So they do public tours. You can ring up the guys here, book in a tour, go on a factory tour have a really good look at these cars being built and they hire cars all year round as well so if you want to do what I've just done come and have a tour of the factory and then experience the Malvern Hills in a Morgan you can do that too I'll put all the details in the description below but yeah two very very special cars I would love to know what you think which one would you choose the four or the six but for now I've got a long drive home so I'm going to pack up and get back in my car. Sadly, I can't drive either of these two cars home. I probably need to disappear before the valeting guys come out and see what a mess I've made of them. But I hope you enjoyed that one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys, but you take care. Drive safe. <laughs>